There is something special about watching an underdog scratch and claw their way to victory. Has Leon Edwards been on your radar at all? Obviously, he I, also wants the winner of... I don't really know him that much. No? Back against the wall. What, what was uh, that this uh, bum guy that you just mentioned? What's his name? Well, I was talking about Leon Edwards, what, and exactly I think what? he's ranked around number 10, something like that. So Up against insurmountable odds. It's not my fault. This kid hasn't fought in two years. So I'm not doing charity for this guy who hasn't fought in two years. He's irrelevant. He's beat a bunch of bums. And the whole world doubting them. Come on, Ron. Worse, left Come head, on, Ron. Unscathed, you let one. him bully you, son. It's special when it's a single fight, but when it's a whole journey with setbacks after setbacks, downfall after downfall, <laughs> it culminates with the underdog prevailing on the biggest stage against a larger-than-life adversary. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Now that is something straight out of a movie. Most people hail the head kick at UFC 278 as the rocky moment for Leon Edwards. But truth is, the current welterweight champion had been fighting the odds ever since he voiced his intentions to capture the belt. In a division populated with athletic freaks, hand-picked favorites, WWE characters and mega stars, Leon Edwards was out of his element. All Leon could do was wait. Wait and win. And that is exactly what he did, undefeated since 2015, two victories over an all-time great welterweight, the division now chasing him, and that gold belt around his waist, look at him now. Welcome to the fighting business. If you're ever looking for our music playlist, downloadable thumbnails, or even looking to get some editing breakdowns and SEO guidelines, come find me on Patreon, where you get access to all of that and a lot more. Uh, but no naked stuff, alright? We've been here before. This before and after was actually originally posted before UFC 286, but age restriction and other YouTube nonsense forced me to take the video down. At first, I plan on just re-uploading the video, but that performance at UFC 286 was special. The upcoming title fight at 296 has a big fight feel as well, the last pay-per-view of 2023 and all, so it's time to remix this before and after. Let's tidy it up, add a few more sound bites, include a whole new segment and fan the flames of the upcoming welterweight clash between Leon Edwards and the most polarizing dude at 170. All I'm saying is, this video is at least 30% better now. In 2018, after an impressive finish of Yancy Medeiros, Donald Cerrone found himself in the top 10 of a second division, and Leon Edwards, who was an upcoming contender, was an obvious matchup to make. Cowboy was past his prime at that point, but he still had enough in the tank to stomp over hype trains, and Cerrone was in rare trash talking form. He's not going to be able to keep the pace. He's going to wither and weigh and probably get uh, knocked out. That's, the, that's my calling. Saturday night, poor guy's going to learn a lesson. Old Cowboy's going to spank the young pup. Edwards had no trouble admitting that his opponent was slow and past his prime by that point, and Cerrone had a point to prove. He called me old, slow, and I told him you had to go home and tell your mom an old, slow man beat your ass. It was old school versus new school, and this was the test to determine if Leon Edwards was ready to break into the upper echelon of the welterweight division. There's nothing Edwards is going to show me that I haven't seen a million times by a million up and comers. Thanks for taking the fight. I appreciate it. It's going to be a very short night for you. It was old school versus new school, and this was the test to determine if Leon Edwards was ready to break into the upper echelon of the welterweight division. In his first main event, Leon Edwards did show that he was the next guy in line for title contention, but despite the talk of finishing the aging veteran, Leon could not secure the finish. But that said, he battered Cowboy and left no doubt that he was ready for top competition. Looking back, this was where Leon started fighting an uphill battle. His victory, while impressive, did not excite the fans too much. He told me don't run from him and the whole fight he ran for me. <laughs> so, but, uh, While Cerrone gave him props. Five rounds and he got the unanimous decision. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Congratulations to him, man. Many fans out there did not. And so the underdog journey began. The next challenge for Leon Edwards was Gunnar Nelson, and the fight was scheduled as the co-main event of UFC Fight Night 147. The main event was a contender clash between Jorge Masdal and Darren Till, and once the three welterweights sat in the same room together, it all began. I feel I should have been the main event. I called out both guys, Masdal and, and Till. I'll punch a hole in your face. You do fucking nothing. You punch a hole in nothing. What are you talking about? Okay. 
Look at your path, look at my path, what are you talking about? For once, Leon was in the spotlight, and his actual opponent, Gunnar Nelson, was under the impression that he might be underestimating him. Do you feel like in, in that way he's not underestimating you or looking over you, but he's got his maybe mind focused elsewhere? I did hear something like this, and uh, yeah, if he is, then it's, it's probably a mistake. How ideally would you like this to go down? Are you looking at the ground, looking at submission again? I'll be looking to, to finish the fight. Uh, a win over Leon will definitely um, shoot me right up there in, uh, in the conversation. Uh, and that's what we're looking to do. But Leon Edwards knew what he was doing. In the co-main event of the night, Leon came out and fought a calculated fight, offensively grappling with one of the best grapplers in the division, picking him apart at range and finding success in the clinch. Leon had earned him snod. Put some respect on my name. The winner of the main event, that should be my fight. This was an impressive victory over a highly credentialed grappler in the division. But in the main event, Masvidal stole the show when he knocked out Darren Till and then got into another fight after the show was over. That knockout was the highlight of the event and no one talked about the Leon victory. It was all about Masvidal and his career resurgence. Maybe Edwards wanted to make a statement. He knew he had to or else the title shot was going to slip even further away. With that in mind, he approached Jorge in the middle of an interview and with the camera capturing all of this, Masdal went over and punched him in the face. You're just a loser in life, man. You're not gonna get a hit off me, you know, so I had to... Three piece in a soda. The meme began at the expense of Leon Edwards. That was the last we saw of Leon that night. Confused, busted up, and definitely one step behind Jorge Masvidal. From knocking out Darren Till and busting up Leon, Gamebred was celebrated as a hero, while Edwards, despite winning in the cage, suffered yet another setback. No way he was challenging for the title, as long as Jorge was relevant. The aftermath of the Masvidal scuffle was terrible for Leon Edwards. He walked away with the victory that night, but Masvidal, in the eyes of many, basically clowned him, and fans found another reason to mock him. You barely want a split decision in your own country. I knocked this dude out, and you're trying to steal my shine like this? That, that's what I'm saying. Like, mm -hmm. And then he got famous off that, which I hate. Fortunately, Leon was back in the octagon a few months after the Gunnar Nelson victory, and his opponent was another veteran, Rafael Dos Anjos. Here's the thing about Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos is a gap closer. That motherfucker closes gaps on you before you even realize he's on top of you. The former lightweight champion was a respected fighter in the 170-pound division, and only lost to the absolute best. RDA at lightweight was a fucking mauler was just murking people, right? But then you look at him at, at welterweight and you're like, Jesus, he might be better at welterweight. But RDA himself had fought a few months prior, but being the legend that he is, he accepted the fight against Leon, and the main event was booked for UFC on ESPN4. Edwards versus Dos Anjos was a great fight on paper, but just a few weeks before this, Masvidal had scored the fastest knockout in UFC history, and he was the biggest active fighter on the roster. Edwards was automatically overshadowed, and he had to pull off an impressive finish over a very game RDA. Yeah, I think uh, he's kind of nervous. He's looking passing me already, and I think that's a big mistake. I I'm glad he's think I'm done, and I'm not gonna be even close to 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 give him a good match, but uh, but different than him. On fight night. Edwards controlled the former 155 pound champion, but he could not finish him. Tactically, it was a great fight, but fans, once again, showered Rocky with booze, especially when he called out Game Bread for a fight. There's a little weasel called George Mustard out. Accept the fight and let's do it. RDA paid his respect to the winner in the cage, but he did not comment on the fight later on. Masvidal, however, did offer his thoughts, and the disrespect continued. After the victory over RDA, Edwards was not seen again for a long time. There was a fight plan with former champion Tyron Woodley, but plans fell through, and Leon ended up sitting on the sidelines for over 400 days. There was no denying his ability as a fighter, but as a name, he was just not well known, and nobody wanted to fight him. He was good, but unpopular, and in the MMA world, that is a horrible position. Here's a guy who hadn't lost a fight in four years, he's on an eight fight win streak, which is crazy, by the way. Taking the hardest fights, having a hard time getting his due, it's just a reality. That division right now is a little bit log jammed. Eventually, after a fight with Hamza Chemaev fell through, Bilal Muhammad stepped up, and Edwards finally got a fight for UFC Fight Night 187. Bilal was a surging contender himself, and this was the perfect fight for Leon to build his resume and popularity. His only issue is that he's not very active on social media, he's not a big talker. 
So those guys, they don't see any big money dollar signs in fighting him. So like, he's a very hard fight, but they don't, they're not going to gain anything from fighting him. Like he's going to be the, the B guy when he's fighting all those guys. Dana White himself promised Edwards a title shot. All he had to do was win in impressive fashion. And if Leon's to put on a, a spectacular show, if you like, uh, against Muhammad, is he the next title contender, the next title shot after Usman wow. and Masvidal? 100 percent. That's good to hear. And on fight night, Leon took this to heart and dominated the first round, showcasing just how good he really was. Unfortunately, the second round was a disaster. This is the most unfortunate oh. thing for two guys. It was a particularly gruesome eye poke, and the doctor ruled the fight a no contest. After 400 days of inactivity, Leon Edwards fought for a grand total of six minutes. And although he dominated for as long as the fight lasted, Leon was not able to make a case for title contention. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was not an impressive performance. That was not a conclusive finish. And Dana White was still in no rush to give this guy a shot. Bilal demanded a rematch. My message to him is, if you're a man, take the rematch. I literally took this fight on three weeks notice, coming off a fight, coming off of injuries, didn't care about them to give you the respect because I know you needed a fight and you needed an opponent. But Leon had much bigger problems going on. A long hiatus, a bad finish, no promise of a title shot, and his popularity sinking ever further below. It was a horrible night for Rocky and he still had a lot to go through. Something was wrong. Leon Edwards was on an impressive win streak, but hardly anyone paid attention to him. And nobody in the company wanted to put him in the title picture or anywhere close. The welterweight division, as I said before, was populated by characters and Edwards, despite being a great fighter, did not draw numbers. He was just bland. To rectify this, UFC brought back Nate Diaz, a massively popular superstar, and the fight was given the common event slot at UFC 263. Real warfare, that's what we came to the show for. We came to see some fights. And last time I checked, that's what I'm doing. This was an attempt to build the popularity of Edwards as the next championship challenger. But Diaz was such a big superstar that he overshadowed everyone else anyway. Nate, as far as the fight itself with Leon, I mean, stylistically, is it one that excites you? Is it one that gets you pumped up for the challenge? Or is this just a business assignment? I know you wanted the best, best fighter you could fight. What was the question? <laughs> it was the Nate Diaz show all week long, and Edwards was booed each time he grabbed a microphone. But that said, inside the octagon, Rocky was a massive favorite to win the fights. And hopefully, by beating Diaz in impressive fashion, UFC fans would finally get to know who Leon Edwards really was. As predicted by most, Edwards was the better fighter, and he was on his way to a flawless victory. But in the last minute, the ever-resilient Nate Diaz found his moment, like he almost always does. And that was the deafening visual. And all that mattered. One moment of vulnerability in an otherwise perfect performance, and the hate and doubt began to flood in, rocked by a former lightweight. Couldn't finish a smaller fighter. If it was a real fight, Diaz would have killed him. If I a fight was a rap, and a real fight in the real world, that's what that fight's a rap. So, uh, yeah, he was, he was sleepwalking. Once again, Leon Edwards was laughed at and booed out of the building, despite being a legitimate winner. On the bright side, this win finally got him a title shot, but MMA fans just yawned, dismissed his chance of winning because that last exchange was disastrous and basically undid every bit of momentum Leon had prior. If Nate Diaz was able to rock him, Usman was going to cripple him. on his fight. He absolutely deserves the next title shot. After a long road riddled with bad looks and setbacks, Leon Edwards was finally given a title shot. But the man in possession of the championship was a walking nightmare. Kamar Usman was so dominant and so good that he had wiped out the welterweight division. And he was in the process of doing it all over again. But you got Kamaru who's a fucking nightmare, man. Kamaru especially coming up, that's one of the things that I remember, and I, I, I talked about it frequently, I was like, no one is calling that guy's name. Kamaru Usman was so dominant and so good that he had wiped out the welterweight division, and he was in the process of doing it all over again. Coincidentally, 
He was also the last guy to beat Leon Edwards all the way back in 2015. Give me 30 more seconds in the first fight and I would have finished you. In contrast to his last few title bouts, there was a good amount of respect between Usman and Leon, and the playful banter started the moment the fight was made official. Everybody Listen. here wants to know. Everybody wants you, to you, help me. You ain't finishing me, bro. You know, help, not. Help me help you. You are not. Tell the people me. how you yeah. gonna get it done. It was all fun and games, and there was a definite drop in intensity in comparison to the last few title fights. What would it mean to you to turn Kamaru Usman into, into a meme? Into a meme. Uh, I want to turn his ass into a meme. Facts, bro. Um. <laughs> Maybe because no one really gave Leon a chance at beating Usman. I think I give it that one uh, Usman. I think that Usman's gonna end up taking it again. I think it's gonna go a lot like the first fight. He's gonna do a lot of wrestling, take him down, control it a little bit more, and it's gonna end up being like a five round decision. Usman had cemented himself as one of the greatest welterweights in MMA history, and there was a lot going on in his life, from movie deals to a possible boxing fight with Canelo Alvarez. Rocky was once again an afterthought, but it was only natural, after all. This was Kamara Usman we were talking about. One thing I have to say is, taking what from who? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you all been waiting for. In the main event of UFC 278, Usman had a bad first round, but he soldiered on and got the best of the challenger over the next few rounds. By the final act, nearly everyone in the building considered Leon a broken man. Leon is broken now, and the biggest tell that you can always know this is because he doesn't give his coach eye contact in the corner. And when they don't give him eye contact, they're ashamed. With mere minutes left on the clock. I shake left. I shake right. Rocky landed a brutal kick to the side of Usman's head. And I'm sitting in the ambulance and they're asking me, uh, do you know where you're at? And ended the nightmare looming over the welterweight division. You were saying that it's a, almost a little bit of a relief. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, it's weird. Shunned and ridiculed. Did the UFC ever come to you with the Rocky fight? No, they never. Down and out. I'm just heartbroken. I don't, know, I don't know what to say. Outmatched and broken. You know, he's a minute and a half from losing this championship fight. Look at him. No, not just yet. It wasn't truly over between these two welterweights. The knockout was spectacular, the post-fight interview was poetry, and in that textbook MMA moment, we forgot about the man who had lost for the first time in nearly 10 years. Usman was up after a few minutes. He did not stick around for a post-fight interview or the press conference, but he did leave the new champion a message. Good job, Rocky. See you soon. Out of all the contenders, Colby Burns, Mazadol, Leon Edwards was the guy who dethroned the long reigning champion. Snatching victory from the jaws of defeat with a minute left on the clock, the championship had changed hands, but you know how it goes when the dominant champion gets beat. You have to beat them twice to erase all doubt. And there were glaring questions left after UFC 278. Was that a fluke? Was this his Matt Serra moment? The former champion thought it was. After all, Usman did control the majority of the fight and only slipped at the last minute. Think about the matchup and how it was going, and you have to worry or, or bet the third fight. You gotta think that Usman's gonna be the favorite because he was cruising. This time, however, the event would take place in Leon's backyard at the O2 Arena in London. The trilogy we never knew we needed was set. Edwards versus Usman three. These two were respectful to each other before, even friendly, but it was heated this time, especially from Usman. He's speaking from an uh, ordinary perspective. You know, he, he's around ordinary people who've done ordinary things and they think ordinary. But I'm not ordinary, I'm extraordinary. The Nigerian nightmare was reminding everyone this was not just a rematch, this was the third fight. Not only did they forget, it's almost like Leon forgot himself. He forgot that it wasn't the first time we fought. Yep. That was the second time. And the first fight looked a lot like that second fight. So it's almost like he forgot because that, that technique landed and, and he has the belt now. So, you know, I was having a conversation with him in that octagon. I was dealing with him mm -hmm. in that manner. And uh, same thing here. You know, he said a couple of things and I'll deal with him March, uh, March 18th. Yeah, it was one and one. And inside the octagon, across two fights and nearly 40 minutes of combat, Usman had demonstrated that he was always a step ahead. Got to be, got to be real with yourself. That's the one thing that I say all the time is, you can't lie to your heart because when you look in the mirror and it's looking back at you, you can't lie to yourself. You think he looks so, at you and sees an inferior fighter? No, <laughs> no. When you share something so in intimate with someone, you know, and him and I know. It's called mixed martial arts. I don't think there's anybody in the world that agrees that he's a better mixed martial artist than I am. The odds reflected this, as Usman was the favorite to win the trilogy. We get back on the horse and do what greatness requires. 
Leon still had something left to prove, and on the night of the fight, Rocky seemed on a different level, almost like he was 30% better as the champion. It wasn't just the belt, this was the homecoming for Leon, and the end point of a long journey. If he won this, no one would doubt his status as the best welterweight on the planet. The main event title fight went the distance, and this time around, Leon Edwards seemed like one step ahead. He wasn't pummeled, he wasn't overpowered, he wasn't bullied. The champion implemented a kick-heavy game plan and despite a point deduction, he was the clear victor with the first title defense in the history. It was a long and haunting time period for the welterweight division, but the nightmare was over and Usman was gracious in defeat. You know he's a brother like myself and much respect. You know, so uh, London, you got yourself a, a hell of a guy, a great champion. The rest of the welterweight silently thanked Leon Edwards that night because good luck beating Kamar Usman. Over the course of this journey, Leon had finally earned the respect and admiration of the MMA fans. They rallied behind him at Salt Lake City and blew the roof off the O2 Arena when he made the walk to the Octagon. And that brings us to the future, to the upcoming pay-per-view. A certain someone was in the O2 Arena on the night of UFC 286. That guy made championship weights, and despite swearing not to announce fights on the night of events, Dana White made an exception and declared Colby Covington as the next challenger for the championship. So it is Leon versus Colby next? Yeah. Colby Covington, the self-proclaimed villain of the UFC, one of Dana's boy, possibly the biggest superstar in the division right now. At the end of the day, I am a champion, and I am the champion, and I'm coming December 6th to, to reclaim and solidify my legacy. And opposite to him, you have Leon Edwards. 2015, when he lost to Usman, he was declared a good fighter, an eternal gatekeeper, but not championship material. From that point on, and all the way up to 2019, Leon was against the odds on a massive win streak, but always so far from a title opportunity. When he finally got his chance at UFC 278, he was deemed a customary title defense. He scored one of the biggest upsets in recent memory, and yet still had to prove himself at 286. Leon Edwards has truly earned the moniker of Rocky, and in London that night, the uphill battle came to an end. Now it's about securing a legacy in the history books. And at UFC 296, Edwards will be looking to do just that. Get YouTube SEO Masterclass, editing, breakdowns, all previous and upcoming videos, music, playlists, downloadable thumbnails, your name in these wonderful credits, and so much more on Patreon. Have a look at it right here. And with that being said, I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.